Well, hello everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. Uh, I promised I'd give you an update on the kitchen cabinet uh, that we built in for the van. And so I want to talk about that today. I went from the, in the trailer, I had a five foot uh, kitchen counter with a two burner stove and refrigerator and everything else. So I could do literally almost anything I would have done in the house uh, easily in the trailer. And so <clears throat> that was an adjustment when I went to the minivan. I didn't have anything set up in the kitchen. So initially I was kind of doing camping style and I'd either just cook on the floor uh, stand outside and cook on the floor or I'd pull like a plastic box out or tote and set the stove on that but then it was wobbly um, and it was just a pain in the neck to cook honestly <laughs> um, it was just difficult um, not impossible but difficult and you know I, I had my, my uh, kitchen accessories in one box and food in a different box and then the stove I'd have to set up and it was just enough aggravation that I didn't want to do it Invariably, I'd get things out and get everything stacked up on the floor or whatever I was cooking. <clears throat> get the stove set up and then realize I forgot something. Have to turn the stove off and move it and then, you know, rummage around through the right box. Uh, so it was just enough difficulty that I didn't want to do it. And that, you know, it's just one of those things, right? It was possible, but it was aggravating. Uh, so I knew I needed to get this done. Uh, both to save money and to eat healthier um, But also just because I wanted to do it because I like to be able to cook my own stuff and and to be honest with you I mean, I'm not a gourmet or, or fancy chef, but you know on average I, I Can you could pretty consistently make stuff that's better than what you're gonna get at most restaurants Unless you're, you're spending a lot of money to go to a good place uh, So I like to be able to cook my own stuff for those reasons uh, so I was anxious to get that done and, and basically <clears throat> you only got two options depending on the size of your minivan you might and how tall you are you might get away with putting the bed on the back then you can run the sidewards that you know then you can run a kitchen down the side or in this case of the it's only 48 inches wide between the wheel wells and I'm 511 so I have to turn the bed uh, lengthwise along the side which really doesn't give me a lot of options for kitchen space. So what I ended up doing was running it along the opposite side, uh, along the wheel well, and so that meant I had a maximum of 48 inches I could use, and <clears throat> lengthwise, uh, and then on a short end, maybe 32 or 35 inches. And I could go 12 inches deep and still have just barely enough room between them to... To, for my legs if I was scooting down the bed or something or I want to sit on the bed and cook and also I go about 15 to 16 inches high uh, because that's how high the, the fender well there goes before it drops back in and if I went higher then I'd have a cavity behind it and I wouldn't be able also be able to access some storage there that I use as is so those are basically my parameters up to 48 inches long 12 inches deep and 15 or 16 inches high so I looked high and low and could not find anything, any kind of boxes or a shelving unit that size in a store. Um, I was left grumbling if we had an Ikea anywhere around, but I think the nearest one's down by probably Denver or something. Uh, I know there's one down to Phoenix, but if I had an Ikea around, you know, maybe they would have had something like that, but but in, in, in I couldn't find anything, so I ended up knowing I was going to have to build it. Uh, not a big deal anyways, and that was actually my first thought that I thought, no, I'll see if I can just find something inexpensive or pre-built, and that'll, that'll work. Because uh, I didn't want to do nothing in this van that's built in, it's modular. So given the mileage on it and stuff, being an older van, if it dies, I can just take stuff out. Um, so I was, anyways, I was helping myself with fencing projects, and I'd mentioned several times needing to get the kitchen done, and he said he had plenty of scrap wood left over. He's uh, become a, a hobby woodworker, and so he had plenty of scrap around we could do it with. So that's what we ended up doing. After we finished with the fencing for the day, we tackled that project, and built, we framed it all with two-by-twos and uh, to keep it light, and then used, uh, actually used OSB for it. We had scrap for the shelf on the bottom and for the top and then we put um, some hardboard over the top of the on the very top to uh, keep it an easier to clean surface um, so it's uh, you know basically built with scrap lumber is nothing fancy but it's solid 
Uh, that thing is overbuilt <laughs> with extra braces and stuff. It's not going anywhere. It's in good shape. And um, it's exactly the size that I need to fit in the hole I had and to meet my needs. So it's a good deal all the way around. Um, I'm happy with it. It works great. Uh, it's really easy to, to you know, basic. I prefer to stand and cook, but you obviously can't stand in a minivan anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I can sit on the bed. I have room for my legs between them, and I can easily reach all of my food, all of my utensils or pots, and and I can, you know, not only cook, but uh, have room to prepare food as well. Uh, I ended up picking up a inexpensive one burner propane stove. Uh, I had to hunt high and low to find that. Um, well, I can find one burner butane, and uh, I could have got a one burner propane, a two burner propane stove for almost the same price. But you know, those are 24 or 26 inches long, and I've only got a 48 inch counter, so I didn't want to sacrifice half or more of my counter just to just for the stove. I wanted some room for cooking and stuff. Lots of good birds around here, <laughs> the geese, they're all over the place. So I ended up going with this one. This leaves about three foot of space for food preparation and other things. Um, conveniently, when I got done with this, I also was able to mount, hard mount my uh, inverter and, and uh, USB outlets and stuff on the end of it near where I had the battery storage. So that also provided an extra convenience. They're not sliding around, falling off boxes when I'm driving and stuff anymore. Um, and I may ever get around to painting it eventually because uh, it's got a couple different colors of wood on it, but. You know, for now it works. Uh, we did not put doors on it, um, both for simplicity and because the space I have between the shelf and the bed is so narrow that it would have been very a whole series of very tiny doors <laughs> to actually be able to open them. So what I did was we just put a lip along the shelf, uh, which is the same technique I used in the trailer, and it worked really well. And so far, I've not had any problem with food. Or, or pots of pants falling out or anything. I am careful how I store stuff in there to stack it in a way that, you know, uh, it's not going to fall out. But I haven't had any problem with it falling out. It works really well and it's simple. Um, so that's the kitchen. It has been game changing for me um, from starting with making my coffee in the morning easily to all right up to, uh, you know, cooking real meals. Um, I've cooked a few decent meals in there already. Uh, last night, even after dark, I decided, man, I, want, I should make some supper. I was going to skip supper. And I decided to make some, so I just hopped in back and was able to make up some uh, chicken fajitas real easily. Uh, you know, cooked it up in one, the chicken in one pot, then then I had to get the skillet out and, you know, made the, the fajitas. I did this all under the glow of a Lucy light that was hanging over the, right, hanging off a coat hook. Uh, so it's just really simple it's game changing and i'm really thrilled i want to give you a quick tour of the kitchen setup this morning while i'm preparing my coffee uh this is my stove i bought it's a it's a, it's a, a tech sport uh just a basic one burner propane stove uh, basically we just have a countertop that runs four feet long the full, basically the whole side of the van uh, this is my coffee mug but this little basket here is a Melita pour over coffee brewer. This thing is really sweet. And if you're looking to make coffee in a van, this is probably the easiest way to do it right here. Um, you just put a filter in and your coffee grounds. It's a, just a plastic cone. Um, set it on top of any mug that it'll fit on, which is, you know, as long as it stays on there solidly. And when your coffee's hot, you just pour the water over the top and you've got you know, a few seconds later, you've got a fresh brewed cup of coffee. This is a thermos food jar, and I have this because I've been practicing, experimenting with doing some thermos cooking, which is a really efficient way to cook things that take a little longer. And pretty much anything you cook in a slow cooker, you can cook in a thermos. Uh, there are a few caveats, but basically that's true. And right now I've got some lentils pre-cooking in there. They'll be going in with lunch. Uh, so I'll probably show you more about that thermos cooking a little later on, but uh, in a video by itself. But it's it's fairly interesting and it's a great way to save fuel, and during warmer weather, also a great way to avoid heating up the van. Um, 
be back behind the coffee cup here. Uh, right now I'm using that little uh, armrest as a food shelf while I'm parked. I'll obviously have to secure that stuff before I travel. Um, and there's a uh, spray water bottle. Actually came from Deborah Dickinson. And she got some pretty colored ones instead to replace hers. Uh, and that's those. That's how I wash my dishes and and whatnot. Uh, very handy. Now, underneath on a shelf here, it's a little crowded trying to show you this, I think, but <laughs> huh. I've got you know some utensils on the end. The pot goes in the back there, and then I just have food all along through here. As you can see, I have some containers, reclosable containers for bulk food. I have a couple of these stacking totes that are left over from the trailer, actually, um, that they work real well. They stay put there, and there's my plate and skillet. Uh, right now, I just have my spices in a Ziploc bag, gallon bag, sitting on top of there. I'm going to get a, a little spice rack that will mount um, probably where this food here is stored right now, I think. Um, or else on the wall behind it, but I want to be able to get that stuff a little better organized. And then I have my Lucy light hanging there. That's how I cooked last night. And meanwhile, it looks like the water's ready, so we'll go ahead and get the coffee going. Look, at this is just really, really simple. You just pour this over here and, you know, try and keep the grounds covered. And I'll have to refill the basket. Two or three times, depending. And it's that simple. And I have fresh brewed coffee. So shout out to my son, John. Thank you so much for helping out with this project. Um, it was, uh, you know, definitely made things better, improved my life experience here in the van. But everyone else, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.